Hello, I hope you're doing great. Today we are going to talk a little bit about the right way to develop minimal APIs. Now, before we continue, please remember to visit fairplay2.btiacostarica.com, click the Buy Me a Coffee icon, select a donation of your preference, and this will allow us to keep the videos and products free for you. Okay, let's continue and let's go back to the minimal APIs. What are minimal APIs? Basically, they are a way that you can create your endpoints in a minimal way. The reason behind it, there are a couple of reasons behind it, right? One is to facilitate the uh, more users to use C Sharp and .NET, right? Pretty much, uh, make it easier for new developers to learn the language, right? Avoiding a lot of what they are calling boilerplate, which is basically the structure or organized structure that you have in uh, things like MPC and controllers and all that. Now, there is also uh, some performance gain um, because with minimal APIs, you don't have to create the controllers and you don't have like all of the process that goes behind instantiating the classes for the controllers and all that, right? You are pretty much just binding an endpoint to a portion of code, right? So in cases where you are need um, fast or extremely fast responses, it actually makes sense to use uh, minimal APIs, right? So for example, if you are using microservices and you are getting millions of requests, you may want to reduce your latency or your response time as much as possible. So in those cases, it makes sense to use minimal APIs. Now there is a small issue. Not with that, but at least with the way that it's being um, taught, right? So if you create an application with minimal APIs, you basically will get, will get a template similar to what we are seeing in here, right? Which is basically a builder, right? An application and then a map get, map post, or whatever other maps that you may find in there, right? And the execution of the application. This is kind of the minimal uh, application that you can create right now as i was saying if you are working on a microservice right it makes sense to have something like this right and microservices are not supposed to grow a lot right so in those cases it's okay now, if you are working, however, in a platform, right, where your code is going to grow a lot, you will find yourself having your program.cs with thousands of lines of code. First of all, that's awful, right? It's totally disorganized. It will be a pain to find your code, right? And something that you will probably have is like, you won't be able, or you will find it difficult to organize or group the code or the endpoints that you have in there, right? Uh, you may start using things like regions, right? And collapse them, right? But not everybody likes regions, right? A lot of people dislike them. So you can end up with a lot of lines of code in your program CS, yes, and that's not good. So, one of the things that you can do is organize it. There are a lot of ways in which you can organize it, right? It is totally, it is totally up to you. Now, the way I am going to show in here, basically, it's trying to reduce the code that you will have in your program.cs as much as possible, right? So, this is a small solution, right? And you will you see that 
we have this program.cs in here, right? So it is based on the template for in .NET 6 for creating uh, an API using minimal APIs with open API or Swagger documentation um, configured or enabled, right? So you see, basically, we have the builder, we have the the API Explorer, we have the Swagger generation, uh, we have the application, we have the configuration for the environment to enable Swagger if it is on development. We set the HTTP redirection. This is the sample data for the weather forecast uh, sample from the default template. This one I added, so we'll ignore it for now. This one I added, we'll ignore it for now, and we have an app run. Uh, the first get that we had in here basically was an app get with the weather forecast route having some of the code that I am going to show in a second, right? Now, you will imagine that if you have all of your code in here, you will start having, this will grow a lot, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, 50, 100 map gets, right? Only for the gets. Then you need to evaluate to, um, to have the other maps, right? Map post, uh, map put, map delete. And you see how it will eventually grow a lot if you do that, right? And that's not good. That's not something you may you want to have. For small applications, it's okay to have the endings like here, right? In other uh, in other scenarios, basically you want you want to reduce the code you have in your program.cs as much as possible. And one of the ways in which you can do that is to create um, some classes and having having them organized. So basically, what did I did what did I do in here? So we have this app which is of type web application, right? The map get returns a route handler builder, right? So I want to create some classes that will use the, um, that will register everything, right? So I put here route builders, it's a folder, I organized this. So created this class weather forecast route builder. And basically it is a static class with a static method or better said it is an extension method to the web application which is the type of the application right that's the type that the um, builder.build returns right and here you can start adding your data and start adding. You will put like build get, build put, build post, right? And in this class, you will uh, configure all of your um, methods for each of the HTTP verbs that you will need for this specific entity or domain or however you want to organize it or call it, right? And then the build get, basically you pass the application, right? And in here, uh, actually in here, I don't need this, but in this other one, yes, because th that's just the state and that's the only one I have at the moment, right? So use this, right? And then you do the map get inside the build get. And then you will have a build post and inside you will add things like app.mappost and you configure your method or whatever you want to do in there, right? You can also use dependency injection. This um, delegate will basically uh, try to match anything that is registered. You see that in here I actually registered this service. So it will recognize that this is um, added to the services, you will retrieve it from the services and you will be able to use it, right? So that's a way in which you can do it, right? And basically you see that I will, I can have in here like 10, 20 or more methods 
the ones I need for each of the routes or verbs for this specific uh, class, right? Which it will be similar to a controller actually, right? And then in here, I will only have one line per single entity or domain or whoever you want to organize it or call it, right? And your program.cs will actually be small, right? Um, at least it will not grow that much, right? So I believe this is one of the best ways that in which you can organize your uh, your code, taking advantage of minimal APIs without having the need to creating controllers and having your um, code as clean as possible, well organized, right? Thank you very much and have a great day. And remember, visit fairplay2.bdicostarica.com, click the buy me a coffee icon, select a donation of your preference, and this will allow us to keep the videos and products free for you. Bye.